Hi guys! We are going to be making this awesome 2.0 clutch made with all fabric from Parker on the porch. Super cute. I'm making the 5x7 hoop size bag. This is what it's going to look like. I'm going to go ahead and use some different supplies. I'm going to use this cute fox fabric from Joann's. It just says that it was designed exclusively for Joann's on the side. It didn't really have a name, but it's these cute foxes. And I bought it recently, so you can go get that at your Joann's. I'm going to use this fabric right here as the accent and the liner. Let me show you the liner right there. And um, this was actually in a fabric bundle from Walmart. It's the Emma and Mila fabric stacks. It's the bundle. It's called Sea Life. These are the other ones that came with it. These, This bundle is what I am using. I'm going to be using fabric tack glue to close my hole. I'm going to be using some scissors, just some clips. These are wonder clips, just some clips. And like I said, I'm going to be using one sheet of tearaway. I'm going to use um, a few sheets of the Pellin lightweight interfacing. So let's get started. I'm going to meet you at the machine. I'm going to show you how to make this bag. Hi, guys. I wanted to show you one thing. A lot of people are um, having problems with this. This is sorry. This is on my computer. When you get your clutch 2.0 files, you will have a folder. You have one folder that says bean and one folder that says satin. Now the bean is used more with like um, a vinyl or something, something that doesn't fray. It's really just a straight curved stitch that goes next to your edge. The satin is the one that is the really super thick stitching that goes over your entire edge. So it seals it all up, which is really good to use with like woven fabric or fabric that frays. Make sure you are picking the right one and and uh, let me see if I can show you real quick. Let me. Also, when it comes up on your machine, you see how thick that is? That is the satin. That's what you want to see if you're doing satin. Let me go back to the bean one and find PS. That is the bean. It's just one stitch line that goes across there. So people are getting confused on that. You get both files. Make sure you're picking the right one. The other thing, um, I guess you don't have to do that on this one because they're all lined. Okay, great. That's all you need to know on that. Make sure you're picking the bean if you just want one little line. If you want the satin, make sure you're picking satin. That's the difference. Okay guys, I am on my machine. I have my 5x7 hoop. I have one sheet of tearaway. I have the 5x7 hoop size clutch 2.0 bag by Parker on the Porch loaded on my machine. Your first step is to stitch the placement stitch directly onto your stabilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll come back and show you. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and place the zipper. Now this will tell us the size of fabric and different things. But right now we're going to place the zipper and you need to place it along this line right here. So we're going to be focusing on this line. You're going to go ahead and take your zipper. The way to know if your zipper is big enough, you just need a zipper that's big enough to get past these stitch lines with the end and the pull far enough over that your foot won't hit it as it goes by. That's how you know how big of a zipper you need. You can do anything bigger. This zipper is pretty big. I didn't have a smaller zipper with this exact color, so I'm going to use this bigger one because I want this color. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to place your zipper on this line. If you want your pull to come from this direction, make sure your pull's over here. If you want it on pull from the other side, make sure to flip it around and put it on this side. Okay, so I'm going to just scoot it up a little little bit. Make sure the end of your zipper and the pull of your zipper is on the outside. Again, far enough over that your foot of your machine won't hit it as it goes by. Okay, so then you're going to go ahead and place your zipper along this line without going over it. You don't want to go over it. These top zip bags, you need to be pretty precise when you're putting your zipper down, else it won't catch on both sides. Because the next step 
is gonna go ahead and stitch a line right here. It's gonna jump your zipper and stitch a line right here. Now, if you are too far over this line, it's not gonna catch over here. And I'll show you once we stitch what it looks like. Okay, so just get really close to the line without going over all the way across. Then you can tape right here and tape over here, or you can hold it if you want as it goes. I kind of just hold it like this and move my hands out of the way. You're going to do want to do one or the other. Your zipper will move if you do not hold it or tape it, so do one or the other. I'm going to stitch step two. I'll come back and show you. Okay, guys, this is what it looks like right here. It is all tacked down. Now you can see where it stitched the two lines. It's stitched here and here. So if you don't have that zipper placed right along the line, you can see where you will miss it right here. Now if you miss it, then you need to like either take the stabilizer out and start over, or you need to use a seam ripper and just rip the zipper out and try again. But it has to hit both places for it to work. So make sure you're taking a little extra time to place these zippers. Once you have it down, you just place it along this line right there. That's probably perfect right on this side. Um, it's really easy to do, but make sure you got that right. Okay, now what we can do is measure our fabric. And I'm gonna give you a couple tips. One of the requests on our um, game we played this week about um, tips and tricks, people wanted to see more tips. So for measuring a couple of the things that you can do, one, you're gonna need four pieces of fabric and one piece of fabric for appliqueing for this clutch bag. Okay, so the first one, we're gonna place the top of your bag and the front liner at the same time. So you need to measure from basically from your zipper teeth down here and then side to side. This doesn't change, but the other ones do. So go ahead and take a ruler and measure from your zipper down. Whatever measurement you get, it's going to be different depending on what size bag you're making. So that's why I'm not giving you the measurements. I'd rather you just know how to do it. So measure down here. Make sure you can get past your stitch lines. And then I add one inch because we are going to do the flip style. So you need some extra. So I see what this measurement is and I add an inch and that's what I use. And then go ahead and measure from stitch line to stitch line here. And here you just need to add a little extra so you do the widest part. You just need to add a little extra because you're going to need to hit both sides over here on the placements over here. Okay, so you need two pieces of that. That's going to be your front of your bag and it's going to be your front liner. They're the same size. So you need two pieces for that. Then you need two pieces for one for the back and one for the back liner. The way you do that is you measure right above your zipper all the way to the bottom and then this side to side measurement will be the same as what you got. Okay, I do a little extra on here too because if you're adding stuff in your bag it might be a little bulky so you need a little bit more room because it's not going to sit flat. So I always just do a little extra here too. So I just, I don't measure like really close. I give myself a little bit of room up there and a little bit of room down here. So like on this one it's like right at five and a half. Okay, so that's how you measure with a ruler. Now a tip, a couple tips, some people are using the clear vinyl and cutting a template. If you're gonna make this size bag a lot, you'd have to do it for every size of the bag that you make. But if you're making the five by seven one a lot, it might make sense to do that. And the reason they're doing the clear vinyl, that's the vinyl we've been using in some of the other bags. This is a 12 gauge vinyl. It wouldn't have to be this thick because you're not stitching on it, but they will measure it like this and they will draw a line and then cut it out. The way they would do that, the reason they would do the clear is then they could see where they want their fabric positioned on the design of their fabric. So the see-through part is kind of cool. So some people do that. Another way you could do it, this isn't for this bag, but you could cut paper templates like this. So you wouldn't have to measure every single time. You could just put this up to your fabric and cut the square. This is actually an idea and I've written it on what it is, this was the five by seven top set pencil bag. This is the bottom size you need. This is the other piece you need. And then you can just clip them together and grab it when you're making this bag. So you only have to measure once on this too. The other tip that I also do is you can write it in a book. Like I kind of do this. So you can just um, flip to the page you're at. Okay, so that is another tip for you. 
Now, I have all my fabric measured out, so I went ahead and measured it. Those are just a few tips if you're remaking the bag. Now, any woven bag that I make on the front piece of your bag and the back piece of your bag, I add interfacing. And the interfacing I use is just lightweight, fusible interfacing. Um, I use Pellin brand. There's lots of different brands. Just look up lightweight, fusible interfacing. You can use medium weight if you like it a little thicker. If you have lightweight and you still want it a little thicker, you can use two sheets. And the way that you use this, there's a smooth side and then there's a little rough coarse side. This is where the glue part is. You go ahead and take the wrong side of your fabric, flip it over, you take the crunchy the rough side of your state uh, your interfacing you place it down and then you iron it and it basically just adheres to your fabric and now this piece of fabric is thicker than my liner it actually makes a huge difference now the other tip I wanted to give some people um, don't like the crunchiness of the tear away the part portion that stays in your bag because this gets lined in here so this portion of the stabilizer stays in your bag if you don't like the crunchiness, listen, the crunchiness of your stabilizer, some people use other stabilizer. I'm just using Tearaway, but some people use um, the water stabilizer to do this bag so, or any of the bags. A lot of people are using the cutaway because it's um, thicker and it's also um, not crunchy. If you use the cutaway, know that when you're I'll show you later in a step, you're going to have to cut out the stabilizer without cutting your zipper or other stuff. So you have to know that you're going to be good enough to do that step um, if you use the cutaway. Okay, so those are just some other tips as well. But another tip, one more tip, if you don't like the crunchiness, I have found if you use a thicker interfacing or if you use two pieces of the lightweight you don't notice the stabilizer as much because your bag is thicker and it's not it's padding it a little more so that is also an option okay so now that we have all of our fabric and tips done I'm gonna meet you at the machine and show you how to put this together okay guys we are actually gonna tape it over here so I'm gonna flip my hoop over like this we are gonna go ahead and place our liner first now the top of your bag is up here so directional fabric is going to go this way I'm going to do that on both this is the top of your hoop but just so you know where the top of your bag is because if you have directional fabric you don't want to put it upside down when you're flipping this hoop back and forth okay so I always kind of do that so I'm going to flip this hoop I actually turn it this way because you're going to place along this line right here there's a line your stitch line okay so take your liner fabric you're actually going to place it go right next to the line like that and then you're going to pull it over making sure you get completely over that stitch line make sure you're over these placements as well because what we're going to do is what's going to stitch one line and then you're going to pull this down like that okay so my direction doesn't matter on this fabric I will show you a little closer on the fox fabric because it does matter. That's all you're going to do is tape that down. Now I'm going to flip back to the front of my bag and we're going to do the same thing here. So the direction matters. You ultimately want your foxes like this because this is the front of your bag. We flip it like this and we place it right along your zipper where your zipper ends right here. So just get it kind of placed right there make sure you're making the side stitch lines as well get your fabric lined up to where you want I'm trying to line up my fox's ears a little bit to make sure they're straight and where I want them to start because I do have fabric that I want to see the picture a little better okay so what's going to happen is it's going to stitch one line right here connecting the top fabric and the underneath fabric then you're going to pull this down. It's ultimately going to look something like that right there. Okay, so you want to make sure you get past this bottom stitch line. If you do not, then you're going to have to pull out your bag. So make sure you have a big enough piece of fabric. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to straighten this a little bit. But now I'm going to go to the machine. I'm going to stitch the next step, which is going to do one line right here. I'll come back and show you. Okay, I am on my machine. 
The next step is step three. It's going to do that one line. I wanted to make sure once you put your hoop on your machine, make sure your liner is straight and it didn't get all bunched up anywhere. And then go ahead and stitch the next step. Okay, guys, this is what the top looks like right there. It went ahead and stitched the step. This is what the back leg looks like. It went ahead and stitched there as well. If you have a lot of excess fabric, like there's quite a bit right here, you can go ahead and trim it. So I'm not gonna trim it yet because we're not doing that piece yet, but if you have extra on the top, you can go ahead and take your curved scissors and cut it right here. Don't cut it too close because you don't want it to rip out of these stitches. You wanna give it a little bit of room, but you also don't want tons of fabric down here. And sometimes that happens when you're trying to place it. Like if I wanted this fox exactly in the center, I'd cut an oversized piece and move it around. So if you do that, then go ahead. Don't forget to trim right here so you don't have all this bulk in there. Ours is pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the tape off the front of the bag. It's taking my stable or my interfacing with me a little bit. Okay. Okay. Now you are going to go ahead and pull just the front, not the liner. You can make it go faster if you're not putting anything, a design on the front of this bag, which I am not. I'm just going to show you straightforward though. If you were putting a design on here, you could pull the back liner and the front liner right now and stitch one step and then skip the next step. There's reason for two of them and I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna do the long way, but know that you could skip one step right now if you weren't putting a design on the front. Okay, so you're gonna pull this down. You can go ahead and tape here and tape here or I hold it as it goes. The next step is just gonna go ahead and stitch down this curve all the way around, tacking the front of your fabric down, not your liner your liner is going to stay up so put your hoop back on your machine and make sure your liner is fine and not bunched up underneath and go ahead and stitch step four okay here we are our liner is still up it went ahead and stitched all the way around the bag now the next step step five is going to go do the placement stitch for your applique that goes along the bottom. So go ahead and stitch that it's stitched directly onto your fabric right here I'm going to run step five I'll come back and show you Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and stitched this curve right around here. This is your placement stitch for the bottom. So you're gonna go ahead and measure that. Make sure you get all the way to the top, all the way to the sides and down. So I went ahead and cut a piece of fabric big enough to get over all of those placement stitches, just like that. Now go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and place our fabric where it's completely over all the stitch lines. We're gonna trim after, but now we're gonna go ahead and run the next step, which is gonna go ahead and tack this fabric down along those same lines. So just make sure you have a big enough piece of fabric to cover that placement stitch, and then go over to your machine and run the next step. I'll come back and show you. Okay, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and tacked that down. So now you are gonna take some applique scissors. These are rounded curved scissors that help you cut along the stitch line without cutting the stitch. You're just gonna cut this top portion off. The rest I would leave. You don't need to trim that at all. Okay, so you wanna cut it close enough to the line that your satin stitches can make it over it, but not so close that you cut the stitch so that is probably I'm going to trim this a little bit more just to get some of this okay so I'm going to show you this is what it looks like right here okay so you are all set make sure your liner staying up when you're putting this on this machine this liner needs to stay up still Okay, so I'm gonna meet you back at the machine and show you what's next. Okay guys, we're on our machine. We trimmed our edge right there. Our liner is up. The next step is gonna do this detail step right there that looks like the little lines that come underneath it. If you don't want those little lines showing, you can skip this step. Um, you don't have to stitch that little detail. I'm gonna because I'm doing a tutorial, but let me show you how normally your machine would be like this. Let me show you how you skip that step. You should have a needle with a plus and a minus. If you click that, you get into your machine right here. That lets you move forward in stitches. This jumps forward and backwards. The plus jumps forward, the back, the negative steps backwards. 
that number of stitches within the step you're in. So if I push this, it's gonna go back one stitch. These spools right here, the plus and minus, jump steps, entire steps. So we are on step seven of 11 right here. If I don't wanna stitch this, I would press the plus spool and it would skip it and now it's on just the full satin right there. So if you didn't want those little lines coming out, that's how you would skip it. Now I'm not gonna skip it because I'm doing the full tutorial, so I'm gonna go back. There it is, it's back there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run step seven directly onto my fabric right here. Make sure your liner's still up and then I'll come back and show Super you. Super cute detail. I debated I was maybe gonna do that like a gray and then do the blue. That might look cool too if you change the color, but I'm just gonna keep it all the same color. Okay, so the next step is gonna go ahead and do the satin, step eight. So go ahead and run that. I'll come back and show you. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and did the whole satin stitch. It looks super great. Now the next step is to pull the liner down. Now this step right here, step nine where you pull the front liner down, this is where you would run anything that you added to your bag for stitching. So if you have a name, if you have a monogram, if you put something on here, if you added something in your software to run on your bag for stitching, you would run it right now before you run step nine. So after step eight, before step nine, before you pull your liner down. Now I'm gonna explain why. So when you're making bags, it makes sense to you. And the, we get the question all the time, when do I add the stitching design? The point of the liner is to hide seams. You don't want seams, but it's also to hide your stitching. So if you flip this over, this big stitching right here, that wouldn't look very nice if it was on your liner. Watch, if we had already pulled this liner down, then you would see all those stitches in your liner. If you pull your liner down and then run a monogram, you're gonna see all the stitches in your lining. So the purpose of the lining is also to cover your stitches. So you want to run your monogram or your name or your flower or whatever you added right now before you pull your liner down. So before step nine. I have nothing, I'm not adding anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the flip my hoop over, take the tape off. Sorry, I am not very good at pulling tape off one-handed, I have figured. Okay. There we go. Pull this down. Now, if your liner does not cover this placement stitch down here, then you, you needed to know that ahead of time, but what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to get another piece of fabric and you're gonna have to seam rip this line right here, which is probably gonna mess with this one here as well. So you might you might be in trouble at, the, at this point. You need to check this um, before because it will mess with your front liner as well. Now I said before, if you have too much fabric on this side now, this is where I would cut it. Oh, it's cut, it's into the seams already. I actually probably should have cut it earlier. I'm just gonna cut some of this out really quick. It doesn't have to be a lot. I just don't want it super bulky. And you can see it's already stitched into my side, so I'm just gonna do that, okay? Not a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down. Now this is the underside of my hoop. Sorry, my finger was there. Underside of my hoop. So you need to go ahead and tape this down. Make it flat and smooth, and then go ahead and tape. I'm gonna pull it down again. Go ahead and tape on either side, making sure that it is good to go. Then we're gonna put it back on our machine. When you get it on your machine, go ahead and lift from underneath and make sure that it didn't move and then it's all fine. And then go ahead and stitch step nine, which is gonna do that curve again, tacking this down. Okay guys, this is look what the top of your bag looks like right here. This is what the back of your bag looks like right here. We're gonna put the back of our bag on the front now. So what you need to do is you need to open your zipper. So I have my zipper open all the way over here. You want it far enough over 
that you can turn your bag through this hole right here, but you don't want it so far over that it goes too close to your stitches right here because the next step's gonna enclose your bag by stitching around these stitches right here, enclosing your bag. You don't want the foot of your machine to hit your zipper pull, so you need to leave enough room right here that your foot of your machine doesn't hit your zipper pull. If the foot of your machine does hit something and messes up, what I do is I stop my machine, I go ahead and seam rip anything that went wrong, like it got caught in your zipper, a lot of times it will stitch the wrong way or too many times in one spot. I will seam, seam rip that, take this off, then I shut off my machine, I return it back on because it lets the arm of your machine recalibrate. If you just go to fix what's on your bag and then hit the step again, it's gonna stitch in the wrong place most likely. So anytime your machine or the arm of your machine gets bumped, make sure to turn it off, turn it back on so the arm of your machine can recalibrate and then it will be in the right place again. If you just keep running it, it's gonna stitch wrong every time, okay? So that's just a tip if you end up doing that. Now. This is also when you put the back on your bag on, open your zipper, and then this is also where people add stuff to, the, to their bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this D Swivel Lobster Class, that's what this is called. You can use fold over elastic, this is pretty fold over elastic. You can use ribbon, you can use the actual fabric that you used on your bag. I'm gonna show you how to do this really fast um, bear with me. What you're gonna do is, I always measure the inside of this. This is like a one inch inside right here. So I go ahead and double that. I cut a piece of fabric that's two inches wide right here. It doesn't matter necessarily how long it is. I'm gonna cut a lot of this off. So then you make it like bias tape. Bias tape, you fold your fabric in half and iron it. You open it up, then you fold one half to your center line, iron it, fold the other half to your center line and iron it, and then you can fold it right in half like that. That's how you get your bias tape from any fabric like that. But we have to do one more step because you wanna keep that sealed. You don't want it opening. So I'm gonna use this right here. There's other things you can use. This is just a light, easy seam. Um, this one's one that you iron. There's ones that you press too. I have this one as well that um, Jen uses to close the hole of her bag. Right here, peel and stick. This doesn't require heat, you just press it. But I didn't get a thinner one, mine's too thick. It's too thick for this, so I don't wanna do it. So I'm just gonna actually, what you do is you just take this off. You go ahead, I don't need this much, this whole thing, so I'm only gonna place it on half of it. Okay, you just rub it down on one side. I'm gonna pull this, okay? Just rub it down. Oops. See if I can get the sticking off. Okay, now you see how I'm pulling the sticker part off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fold it on itself, lining it up where I want it, all the way down. And then I'm gonna take my iron and just put some heat on it, okay? And it will seal those two together so they won't come up, okay? So I'm just gonna put some more heat on it and then I'm gonna let it sit a second. Ooh, it's hot. And I'm just gonna cut some of this because you don't need this much, okay? Now, we don't need that anymore. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and place this through your swivel, I actually like this, I have different sides. I actually like this side better. So place it through your hardware. You're gonna go ahead and place it anywhere along these placement stitches right here, because that's what it's gonna stitch around this. Like if you wanted it up here, you would place it like this. Your hardware needs to be in the center because you're gonna cut off anything else around the bag. So that's something to remember. Now people are making those purse straps. I'm gonna go ahead and do a tutorial and actually make it. But if you did this twice, 
you would just go ahead and place it like this and then place another one right here. And then when your bag flips, you will have those two little hooks on the top to hook your bag to for a crossbody bag. I'm just gonna do a little clasp over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here. Now, depending on where it is on this line is gonna determine how long this is in the end. If you want it short, then make sure to put it close to your stitch lines right here. If you want it really long, go ahead and place it farther away and then you're gonna have a really long one. You can place this at an angle so it's sideways. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. Your only um, restraint on this is that you can't place it so close that the foot of your machine, when it's going along these stitches, hits your metal. You need it far enough in that it's nowhere in the way of the foot of your machine. So once you have it like exactly where you want it, I'm gonna put mine like right there. Now the side that's gonna show on the front as well is the bottom, this side, whatever you're placing right sides together this is what's going to show on the front so if you're trying to put like a paw or something know that i'm going to place it right there i'm actually going to do it a little shorter i'm going to put my tape here now you're going to take the back of your bag the right side's going to go against the right side right here Make sure you get over all your placement stitches. And then go ahead and go to the machine. Watch your um, directional fabric. Remember, this is the top of your bag, so you want your fabric to go the right way. I'm getting over all my stitches. Okay, trying to make him straight as I can. Okay. Now go to your machine and go ahead and stitch the next step. It's gonna go around this bag several times, okay? So I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like on top. This is still what the underneath looks like. Now you're gonna go ahead and flip your hoop over. Remember where your top is if you're using directional fabric. You are now gonna take your liner and you're gonna go ahead and do it right sides together over all these stitch lines. Just make sure you get over all of them. Take tape, tape it down, I make sure that I have a little more fabric towards the bottom because we're going to close the hole down here. It's going to stitch the same thing it just did, but leaving a hole opening right here that we can flip through. Okay, so go ahead and go back on your machine. When you put this on your hoop, make sure you kind of look underneath before you start to make sure this fabric stayed flat and great. And then go ahead and stitch the very last stitch step and I will come back and show you what mine looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. This is the front of our hoop. This is the underneath of our hoop. You can see that it went ahead and stitched all the way around leaving a hole right here. Always make sure to check the bottom of your hoop before you pull it out. I get going fast and I just whip my stuff out of my hoop. But I've done that and then it didn't stitch right, like the bobbin didn't catch and my machine didn't beep and tell me and then I had to sew it on the sewing machine. So check to make sure it stitched this before you pull it out of your hoop. Okay, so let's pull it out of our hoop because we are done stitching. Okay, I'm going to take all the stabilizer off. Okay, once the stabilizer's all the way off, I cut from this side because I wanna see where my stitches end on either side. It's easier to see from this side, but you don't know where the stitches stop. So I'm gonna cut from this side. I cut at an angle like this, and I cut up to the stitch lines without cutting them. And then I turn, and then just cut all the way around your bag without cutting your stitches. And you're going to be cutting off zippers and all sorts of stuff, thick stuff. So make sure you have good enough scissors to do this. Okay, see how we're cutting off the extra zipper so it doesn't matter if your zipper is bigger. Okay, so you just cut it all off. This is also a way to remember why all your hardware and stuff you're adding to your bag needs to go on the inside. It's kind of confusing because it doesn't come out until you flip it. So it seems weird to put it on the inside. 
but you cut all the way around this. So if you put it the other way, you're going to cut it off. Okay, now I'm going to cut some of this excess off, like right about here. Okay, now we want a little bit extra for your two liner pieces. So your liner pieces are here. If you're not sure what the liner is, just locate the hole. It's going to be the sheet on this side and then the fabric sheet on this side. I saw some stabilizer and hang it cut off. Okay, so all this extra right here is just bulk. So you can cut that off. So the way I do that is I just fold that you want this up. Don't cut that. I'm going to put that up like this and kind of hold it like this. Now don't cut at an angle like this when you're cutting because you'll end up cutting these stitches right here and then you'll have to start over. Just cut like a straight line. It doesn't have to be super, super close. You're just trying to get the bulk out so you don't have that at the bottom of your bag. Okay, so I just cut some of it off and then you still have the liner right there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and flip our bag through this hole right here. Now be kind of careful because the, it's fragile right here next to these stitch lines, these edge stitch lines, because this is really just woven with some stitches right there but you're using fabric right here so it shouldn't be too hard to turn I just kind of turn by the side and just kind of pull out a little bit at a time and then just keep flipping the side okay and then on this side I go ahead and put my thumb in and I'm kind of pushing it through like that without putting a lot of tension on that little spot where the stitches okay so then i'm just going to use my fingers to get these out a little bit better it doesn't have to be super perfect because you are going to turn your bag again but i'm going to get it at least flat and smooth enough that i can close this hole okay so here's your hole we're turned once there's your hole right there we are going to close this now now there's multiple ways of closing this hole Everybody uses what option they like best. Just try them out and see which one you like best. Um, there's no right or wrong answer to this. So the way I do it is there's stitches right here. So I follow these stitches. I flip this fabric in. This is why I leave some excess fabric so I can kind of sandwich it. So I get it kind of where I want it. And then I use these wonder clips that we get. some. These are wonder clips. You can get them in big bulks on Amazon. Okay, so I just flip it. I kind of line mine up first before I do anything. So I just get these kind of straight where I want it. Okay, now this is the bottom inside of your bag. So it doesn't have to be super precise either because people aren't totally going to see the bottom. So I just have it kind of lined up like that. Now I'm going to close it with glue. I'm going to show you how to use the glue method. This is fabric tack glue. So I use this in this video. Um, you can also use, um, lots of people are using this peel and stick. It's basically um, tape, kind of like a tape. It has like a sticky red residue on one side. You just go like this, you'll stick it down, rub it, and then you can pull this upper layer off. This is just... Um, like the covering or whatever, you pull it off and then it leaves a sticky film across your hole, like down here across your hole, and then you just press. You don't need heat or anything else for this. That's all you do is press it down and you're good to go. So you can use that. Um, the other one you can use is like what I used for um, making the bias tape for this. You could use this. I already showed you how to use it. You use an iron for that. You can use that. You can take... Um, a needle and do a ladder stitch go ahead and you can youtube or google you basically take a needle and from the inside you weave the needle back and forth so you don't see any sewing you could take a sewing machine and sew it if you do the sewing machine you will see it from the other side because you're sewing all the way through this bottom so you'll it'll be you'll see a little bit of it i probably wouldn't suggest the sewing machine but if that's how you want to close it you can do that so I'm going to go ahead and show you this. Here's the glue. I like the glue. It's pretty inexpensive, especially for how little you use. It's clear. I just go ahead and put it right there on the edge. I make sure I fold this over a little bit better. Okay, and then I go like this. I take any excess off like this and just wipe it on your scraps. You have scraps here now. Okay, and then I just put some...
clips there then I open the other side I like it because it's um, inexpensive you don't have to use very much it goes on super fast you can see how fast it goes on I'm just gonna wipe that and um, it dries really quick three to five minutes you can turn your bag and it takes that long to get your stabilizer out anyways so three to five minutes you're ready to turn it doesn't leave any hard residue in the bottom I mean if it made it really hard and clumpy at the bottom like you would imagine glue does um, I probably wouldn't use it but it doesn't leave that it's actually really straight really smooth it dries really fast I like it Everybody has their own preference though, so that's what I do. Now, while this dries, go ahead and open your zipper right here. If you didn't open your zipper in that step that I showed you to, you wouldn't be able to do this. The bag wouldn't open, okay? So you needed to open it and that's why. So then you're gonna take the stabilizer out. There's some placement stitches. Don't feel like you're breaking your bag. You're gonna tear these bracelet or these uh, placement stitches out. You can cut it on the end if you don't like tearing. I just pull it and tear it. Um, but if you wanna use a little scissors, you can do that as well. Now you're just gonna wanna get the stabilizer out right here all the stabilizer clean it up and then I will meet you back and show you what we do next okay there we go it went ahead and I got all the stabilizer off if there was any little um, threads I went ahead and trimmed them down so this is what the inside liner of your bag is gonna look like okay now you could take these clips off because it is dry enough to turn okay you can see that it's straight there's no hole, it's sealed, it looks great, it's not hard and clumpy, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and flip through this hole now, so go ahead and flip. You're gonna make sure you do it really um, clean and nice this time, because this is your final flip. So I'm gonna get this really good. Okay. turning thing I use this to help get the corners out really good this is just a sewing turning system but you could use a chopstick you could use the end of a pencil the eraser part um, there's lots of things people use the thing called the purple thing if you go to the Parker on the porch blog um, Anna did a really cool blog she linked all of your guys's um, cool tools and a lot of them were turning system tools so go there and look and all the links are in there okay so use whatever works for you and your preference okay so get your bag all smooth and nice and then I'm gonna zipper it up okay so here's the front of your Parker on the porch 2.0 clutch super easy super cute here's the back you open your zipper up it's completely lined there's no seams i hope this tutorial helps you make this bag it's super fun and super easy lots of people are loving this bag right now um here's your little uh, that's the um little thing we made and then the lobster class the swivel lobster class this is um, by a, basically bias tape, but it makes the little holder tag if you want it to match your fabric. Okay, so um, like this video if you want to see more and uh, make sure to subscribe and go ahead and click on that little bell. If you click on the bell, as soon as the video uploads, it notifies you that there's a new video. I normally post it in the Parker on the Porch group, but not always and i hope you enjoyed this thank you so much any of the the design file for this the parker on the porch clutch 2.0 design file link is right under if you click on right under this video you'll see my name and some words or whatever there's a show more if you click on the show more it has a bunch of links in there it has the link to this design it has links to where i buy zippers it has links to where i buy vinyl it has um where i what scissors i use it has my stabilizer I use. It has all sorts of stuff in there. The other good resource, like I said, I mentioned on here, go to the Parker on the Porch blog. If you go to that blog, there is um, all the 
um, different things that Jen uses, who is the designer. Jen is the owner and sole designer of everything on Parker on the Porch. Um, I'm just a, test, a tester and I do videos. So um, go ahead and go there. That's another resource for you. It has all the links to the different materials and stuff she uses. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.